welcome everybody to uh, a video, uh, possibly the first in a series of videos about the Cortex M55. My name is Chris Shaw. I'm Director of Product Marketing in the uh, a a automotive and IoT business at Arm. And my team and I are responsible for proliferating and promoting the use of Arm microcontroller technology in the embedded and IoT space. So we are very excited as a team about the possibilities from the latest processor in the Cortex-M range, the Cortex-M55. We announced this about a year ago, um, and our partners are working on producing silicon right now. Uh, what I'm really excited about today is that with me, I have Alan Skillman. Um, Alan Skillman has an extremely strong and very interesting connection with the Cortex-M55, so I, I'll let Alan introduce himself and tell you all about that connection. Over to you, Alan. Oh, thanks, Chris. So I'm Alan Skillman. I'm a uh, part of the CPU group in Cambridge. And as Chris says, I have a very close relationship to Cortex M55 as the technical lead of the project. So I was responsible for working closely with the, the marketing teams and the licensing teams in order to uh, take their requirements and fit it in to the design of the project, which we, I work with my team. Alan, thank you. Um, that, that sounds like you are exactly the person we want to talk about if we want to find out some, some real technical uh, information about the Cortex-M55. So if we go back, uh, I guess, quite a few years to looking at the market and working out what market needs there are and, and what might be uh, matched by a, a possible new product that ARM might possibly develop, what market needs were those that we identified? Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, our partners are looking to do more and more of their compute work, what we call at the edge. That's on the device itself. So rather than trying to pass the information out to the cloud and use some back-end compute system to do the, the processing, they want to move that into the device that actually sits in your living room or in your car or in your workplace. Now, to do that means you need more compute capabilities in the uh, processing elements that are actually on that device. And at the time when we looked at what we were able to provide, um, the microcontroller-like components, the Cortex-M processors that we had in those uh, available at that time, were not fully capable of being able to do the type of computation that was being required by our partners. So typically that would be uh, digital signal processing, or increasingly recently, the introduction of um, machine learning type algorithms, so artificial intelligence. And so what, we, what the, the, the teams were looking for was the ability to do that more computation, but in the same um, compact type processor that we already had available, and that was incredibly popular with our, with our, with our customers. Thank you, Alan. So if I get you right, it's not just a call for more compute. It's actually, as well as that, a call for a different kind of compute. Have I got that right? Exactly, yes. So um, a typical microcontroller in a regular device, that maybe a device that isn't connected, is quite often doing a lot of control work. So it's, it's processing a small amount of data from peripherals and it's mainly controlling how they operate. Uh, the, the very name microcontroller is, 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 a, is a kind of giveaway here. Whereas the type of compute we're talking about here is more based on data being um, brought in, processed, and brought out. A typical data stream involves lots of uh, uh, reads and writes to memory, plus a lot of uh, arithmetic processing. So. Um, operations involving uh, multiplication, multiple accumulate, floating point operations across lots of different data types. These are very different to the type of operations you tend to use within a more controlled environment. Right. So, so what you and your team actually set out to build is quite a departure from the sort of the 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 the, the sort of run of the mill microcontroller, if you like, and it's capable of very very different operations and a very different kind of compute. That sounds very exciting, but it also sounds like it comes with its own special set of problems, if you like. So, how did you go about translating that 
unusual or, or very sort of out of the box requirement into a specification for something that you could build? Okay, so we didn't do it alone, and that's the important thing here. We had a lot of help from both our R&D teams within ARM and our architecture teams within ARM that work with the marketing team and the engineering teams that design the processes to put together both the right microarchitecture for building the processor and also the architecture. So that's the instructions that we execute. So R&D came up with a completely new architecture extension, which we call Helium. And this is based on a vector technology. That means that we process multiple elements of our workload within a single operation into a single register, register read and write. This is quite common across the, uh, the industry. Indeed, typically you would find vector technology in uh, DSP processors, which are quite often used in similar environments. However, and also we, we have them in our, our um, application processors, which are very familiar. You might be familiar with the Neon technology that we have in the market. But in the microcontroller space, we need a different solution because of the different requirements in those space. So the architecture team worked closely to develop that architecture. And then we worked closely with the architecture team in order to deploy that processor, that technology onto the processor that we were developing. Right. Okay. So um, I, I can see how you translate a, you know, a very tricky requirement into what I'll bet was a very tricky specification to build um, in, in the context of, of a traditional microcontroller architecture. So what features of the Cortex-M55 you know, were, were really driven by that? And, and what, what sort of you know, blocks or features or um, uh, components did you have to develop really from scratch as part of this new design to make this vector technology work? Okay, I guess the, the, the real important thing to to, to bring in here is that in a microcontroller, it's really important to be able to um, operate at a very efficient manner. So typically that means doing a lot of work with a little amount of power. So essentially we had to build a processor that um, was compact. It uses a very short pipeline in order to minimize the amount of power that we were burning, but also in, in order to get a, a, a good throughput throughout this, this um, pipeline in order to get data transfer in and out of the processor. This means that relative to a regular microcontroller architecture, we need to introduce a complex and um, uh, configurable memory system because some partners don't necessarily need all the complexity and they want to minimize the area they use. But other partners want to have a lot of complexity and capabilities in their memory system. And Sounds like managing a lot of potentially quite conflicting requirements, which is a very tricky job. Here's my favorite question to you, Alan. What was the really tricky bit? What, what of what you've, you've, you've managed to build are you and your team most proud of in the Cortex-M55? I think probably the most tricky problem was meeting the, um, the requirements in uh, what we sometimes call PPA, so power, performance, and area. These are the these are the kind of the the triplet of of um, uh, figures that we always have to adhere to. So we're looking for something which has the lowest power, the maximum performance, and the lowest area um, within a particular design. And in this in in this particular set of requirements implementing the design to match these these is actually really tricky especially when you tend to build very short pipelines from a logic perspective that means that there is a lot of logic gates fanning out from the flip-flops and fanning into the flip-flops and when you actually uh, translate that design into something you can build on silicon there are a lot of factors that can affect the overall area power and performance so Optimizing all of them at the same time is incredibly tricky and takes a lot of um, expertise and experience in order to know what is a good thing to do and what is not necessarily a good thing to do in order to, to get the best result. Right. 
Now, it sounds like a really tricky balancing act. I think Alan and I have actually been at ARM a very similar length of time, actually about 20 years, which is quite shocking. Um, and I think um, from my personal experience, that particular battle that Alan has just been talking about um, really characterizes almost everything that ARM does. Uh, you know, each year we'll introduce a, a new groundbreaking product that is, uh, you know, that, that it is highly power efficient and, and highly um, productive in terms of performance. And the partners think it's lovely and they go and produce silicon and they come back next year and they say, that was great. Can we have the same, but can you make it twice as fast and <laughs> half the size? So, <laughs> Very much so, yes. <laughs> So yes, it's an ongoing, uh, ongoing battle. Um, so uh, and 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 the Cortex M55 is not standing still, Alan, is it? Um, there are uh, we hear um, new features coming in a future release. Could could you tell us a bit about those? Yes, certainly. So we finished the first version of Cortex M55 for general release um, this year. So indeed, it was in around um, in around March this year that we completed it but we haven't stand, stood still the entire team is now working on uh, the next version of the processor which includes some really exciting features so probably the most interesting feature to talk about here is what we call the arm custom instructions so this was something that was announced um uh, i think a year and a half ago um by um by by the company and this involves a technology that allows partners to define their own instructions. Um, so essentially, they build some logic, some, some RTL Verilog logic that is then included in our intellectual property. And then the whole thing is uh, obviously then uh, constructed into silicon. But this logic that the partners put in allows them to define their own instructions, which they can put in their software, and they can use them in any way they want in order to accelerate um, the overall processor to do what they want to do. So this may be new types of computation. It may be ways of accelerating um, particular um, algorithms that they use themselves. It could mean new types of data, uh, data types that, that are unique that um, aren't available in the regular instruction set. So this is, this is really exciting technology. We already have uh, the first generation of a processor with, with ACI capabilities in the market already, and M55 will, will add another, um, uh, another dimension to the capabilities there as well. That sounds like it'll take it into into whole new uh, feature spaces and use cases, which is very very exciting. Now, um, I'm going to ask you to to sort of open your crystal ball, if you like, um, and and first of all answer the question that everybody wants to ask: is when will we see silicon products with Cortex M55? Okay, so um, our partners are now working hard with 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 the technology that uh, I mentioned earlier that we released this year. Um, and I would expect that to see the first products containing Cortex M55 in the next year. Right. So uh, people will be itching to get their hands on this. Now, the next crystal ball question is the one that I want to hear the answer to, which is if you could buy yourself a product containing a Cortex M55 that you could get really excited about, what would that product be? Well, there are so many possibilities in this in this space, particularly um, where machine learning is used at the edge. Most people are very aware of uh, um, technologies such as smart speakers that we all have in our in our kitchens, and we ask the time of day or to set a timer to boil an egg. Um, and one of the things that uh, Cortex M55 is very well um, adopted to is this type of technology. So. Smart speakers um, with very highly energy efficient and low power technology allows them to be potentially not even connected to uh, a power supply. So they could be much smaller and they could be distributed anywhere we want. But I think probably one of the, the more interesting ideas, it isn't, it isn't maybe so easily um, uh, obvious to everyone, but in, um, in health, and industrial um, uh, areas, there are other, there are very similar types of requirements that, although maybe they're not so visible to everybody, they are incredibly important. Um, so, for example, one of my one of the areas I find is rather interesting is in industrial environments where you can use very small smart sensors, which can detect when industrial equipment is 
um, potentially damaged that needs to be replaced. But this doesn't have to be buried deep into the equipment or, or taken in and out. It could be just something which is put on top or stuck to the side of a piece of equipment, and therefore it could be changed when it, when it needs to be done and therefore have a better lifetime. Right. So you've got products that have the chance to, to really transform parts of whole industries, which is, which is very exciting. Who knows? Perhaps it'll get to the point where you can talk to your smart speaker and say, hey, computer, design me a Cortex-M55. But I have to hope, we have to hope that doesn't happen, <laughs> I suppose. Otherwise, you and I will be looking for new employment. Um, anyway, um, so thank you, Alan. Uh, I get the impression that we could have talked for, for hours about your experiences uh, of designing uh, and implementing and launching the Cortex M55, and we'll look forward to chatting more in the future, I hope. Um, so uh, for those watching, um, do look out for new resources on ARM's website about the new Cortex M55. Um, if you have a hunt around the product pages there, uh, you'll find a, a fantastic white paper by Joseph Yu, our sort of resident microcontroller expert, uh, which gives you a great overview of the processor, target applications, how to get started designing with it and programming for it. And we've also just recently, about a month ago, launched an MVE textbook. That's a textbook on the Helium technology, this vector processing architecture extension that Alan was talking about. That's written by John Marsh, uh, and that's available now as a free PDF uh, download from the website. Um, we're going to be... Uh, uh, launching some some more interviews, uh, hopefully talking to uh, some companies who are actually using and designing and prototyping with the Cortex M55 and get their first impressions of what it's going to enable and what it's going to do. Uh, but for the meantime, thank you for watching. Look out for future videos. Goodbye. <laughs>